Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I would like to go over yet a an, another march towards the you will own nothing society and the you will own nothing when it comes to your own software. This was a company that I, to give credit to, actually held out on this for a really long time. What their model was, was rather than have something where you're paying every month, they just had really expensive plugins. So they created, in what were in my opinion, top tier audio emulation plugins that emulated the sound of other audio gear and they would charge you out the ass for it because they knew that they were one of the best at the time. This company is Waves. So what Waves did is they made a lot of different plugins that would emulate real audio gear. So if you were using Pro Tools in 2004 and you just put a compressor on a track with a you know vocal that you wanted to put through a compressor and you were somebody that used to use Avatar Studio A, you probably noticed that the, the compressor and software just sounded like dog shit. Whereas the actual compressor that you could use in the rack, like an LA-2A or an LA-76, or I mean 1176, or like an equalizer, like in, you know, an EQP from Poltec versus the garbage that was with the Pro Tools, like this sounded good, whereas the software solution just sounded like crap. So what Waves did is they would emulate all of these different pieces of hardware and make it so that the software actually sounded like the hardware. And, you know, there's going to be people out there that say there's nothing as good as an original one and like that. Yeah, but like, you know, it costs $3,000 to buy one of these things. And if you want to have this on multiple audio tracks, it's just not, it's not as viable financially as being able to just buy a plugin and insert it on there. And it was a pretty damn good plugin. It just became very expensive. You could buy plugin bundles that were $3,000 and $5,000. The Waves Diamond and Mercury bundles were insanely expensive back in the day. But when you bought it, you owned it. You could use it on that piece of software for a very long time. You may have to pay for updates to certain things when, you know, new, new hardware platforms come out. You know, again, you, if you wanted to upgrade from, let's say, using Waves plugins on your G5 Power PC based Mac to using it on an M2 pays back, you may have to give them more money. But you, for the most part, you owned what you bought. You could continue using it on that computer perpetually to the end of time. Now you have an annual or monthly license. So you can pay $149.99 a year or $249.99 a year. Now, I'm honestly a little bit mixed on this because again, when you look at their bundles, when you look at the bundles that you used to have to buy to get these over 220 industry leading plugins, you were spending like somewhere around like $3,000 to $10,000. So even if you were using this for 10 years, you're still technically coming out better than you would have been coming out of pocket if you were buying it outright. Like you're getting, you're still getting over 10 years of use and instead of having to pay for it all up front, you're amortizing it over those 10 years. And if you're somebody who is broke, you can just pay monthly. Again, like having a broke person pay 3,000, having a broke musician pay three or $10,000 up front, that's never gonna happen. But being able to pay $14.99 a month or $24.99 a month, honestly, it's not that bad. Like I, I you know, I, I was ready to rage about this, but then when I saw the the pricing of it versus what the pricing was to actually buy a lot of this stuff outright. I mean, does anybody remember the Mercury bundle or just looking at this? Like when you went into a studio that had the Mercury bundle and it didn't say H2O on it, you knew that that person had their finances in order because they had paid five to ten thousand dollars for their plugins. Like this stuff is not cheap. So when you're taking a look at what these plugins used to cost, again. It's going to take you 10 to 20 years to match the cost of buying it outright with their monthly subscription service. So I'm not as mad at this as I am for, you know, like taking something like car seats where this was something that was, you know, like $200 to buy with the car. And now they're going to charge you a monthly fee of 10 or 20 bucks in order to get back what used to cost that much. So I'm very conflicted here because on one hand, the same principle of lack of ownership is coming into play. And I really do prefer the ownership model to the subscription model. On the other hand, the pricing here is in my opinion, far more reasonable than it was before. Again, you're paying three to seven thousand dollars to get access to all these plugins, and now you can pay twenty, you know, fifteen to twenty-five dollars a month to get access to all of these plugins, which is just so much more accessible to most of the population than having to buy this outright. And again, like. 10 or 15 years from now, you may, I don't know, you may not even be making music anymore. You may have moved on to a different career at that point. And above all, let's say that you were here for the shift. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, that you bought this plugin set for the PowerPC G5 base Max. And now there's a shift to the M2. Do you think that your Waves plugins that were designed for the G5 PowerPC base Max are going to work on an, on an R market uh, texture? Probably not. 
it's probably not going to work on there at all, and you're going to have to pay again. However, if you're paying a monthly fee, you can say, no, 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 no. I didn't pay $7,000 for shit that's not going to work on my new computer. You make this shit work on my new computer, or I stop paying you a subscription fee. So like, I think that they are making, on one hand, they're making a shift in a direction that I don't like, but on the other hand, at the very least, they're really, really coaxing the price to try and get people to be okay with it. I feel less mad in that case, and I feel less aggravated for giving up my principles there. Uh, and also, I think part of this pricing is also because they may have noticed that a lot of the people that were using the plugins included in this tended to have, you know, a, a lot of water in their computers, if you know what I mean, a lot of H2O in their computers, if the people watching this that worked in the audio industry for a long time know what I mean, uh, you know, they're probably trying to get rid of that as well. You know, everybody here, I think that has worked with high class producers or recording engineers at some point is familiar with that dude that has three of the same computer. You know what I'm talking about. The guy that has a Mac G5 from 2005 running the same version of Logic Pro 7 or 8 that never connects it to the internet, that has his drive mirrored with RAID 1 and that has two or three copies of the exact same thing just because he doesn't want to change his workflow. There are so many people that like, like the idea of ownership. They like the idea of, I've, I have this set up, I know how this compressor is going to sound. I know how this equalizer is going to sound. I know how this program is going to work. I already have figured out how all this works, and I'm able to make awesome music with this. I'm never changing anything. I can't tell you how many producers I met that are holding on to a computer that's near 20 years old. They don't care about security updates because that is not a computer they will ever attach to the internet. All they, you know, they transfer everything onto it via an external drive so that they are never screwing with it because they want their setup to never change. There are those people that are probably not going to be happy with the monthly subscription model. But I think a lot of other people are going to be happier, even if they're not owning something, paying $15 to $25 a month, rather than six or $7,000 up front for something like this. And again, you know, people are going to say this is a ripoff, you know, $3,000 for these types of plugins and blah, 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 blah. But when you look at the work that goes into these things, at the time, in 2005, if you were using the stock plugins that came with Pro Tools, they sucked. They were fucking horrible. Absolutely. Putting audio through a com like one of the Waves compressors or one of the, you know, the SSL bus compressor that they had or the LA-2A versus the Pro Tools stock compressor. It was just, it, it, it was a completely different world. Like, again, nowadays, nowadays, with all of the alternatives that have come out, they may not be worth three to $7,000 anymore. But at the very least at the time, they were... I thought they were pretty good. Let me know what you think. I'm really curious. Would you rather be paying $2,000 to $7,000 up front, or would you prefer to pay $14 to $24.99 a month, but never have the option to buy it and own it, where you are essentially stuck? Is there a price point at which the you own nothing and will be happy model is a model that you would be okay with? If you're talking about three or $7,000 to buy it, versus like $15 a month. Is there a point where you would be okay with not having some level of ownership and sovereignty over the software that you got because you're getting such a good deal? Or is this just something where you're saying, no, this is completely unacceptable. I hate the subscription model. I screw the subscription model. I will never deal with a Waves plugin on principle alone because I want to pay three to $7,000 for it rather than have a subscription model because ownership is that important. I'm really curious. I find myself here personally bending my own principles because I hate subscription-based crap, but at the same time, when the price difference is this much, I would almost, dare I say it, prefer to have the monthly model where I don't own it if it's going to be that cheap. And maybe that makes me part of the problem. And if it does, by all means, call me out in the comments down below for being a hypocritical piece of shit. Maybe I deserve it. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.